Imagine if the biggest snake in your country was also the fastest, and on top of that, the most venomous one too. Sounds like an intense animal, but in Chile, you don't have to imagine it. Because that is the exact story of the country's most dominant reptile, the Chilean racer. This snake's abilities might seem over the top, but pushing their ecology to its limits is what it takes to survive in the world's harshest desert. The Atacama Desert of northern Chile is one of the most brutally challenging environments on Earth. This is the planet's driest desert. Some areas have gone dozens or even hundreds of years without rain, and there are parts of this region that can barely even support life at all. The animals that do live here have been pushed to the extreme in order to survive, and today we're going to show you the amazing ways the Chilean racer has managed to beat the odds and become the top reptilian predator in the country. My name is Harrison, and this is Evan. We're twin brothers on a mission to share the real stories of our planet's weirdest and craziest animals, while we still have the chance to. We have come to Chile alongside our good friends Emilio Pazmino and Spencer Hoffman to investigate how life in the desert has forced two infamous spiders to become some of the deadliest arthropods in the world. But here in the more hospitable coastal desert scrub, there's quite a bit more moisture, which means a lot of other animals can carve out a living for themselves, and we want to tell their little-known stories too. The Chilean racer is one of the most successful of these intrepid survivors, but most people outside of Chile have never even heard of them because they're very uncommon to encounter. They're so hard to find that we didn't actually think we'd be able to see one on our short trip and made no plans to target them. But as luck would have it, we didn't have to. As we were getting settled into our lodge after less than 12 hours in the country, Emilio wandered outside to poke around and almost immediately called out that he had spotted something big that we were all gonna like. Got it. Holy cow. We weren't expecting to see that one. Right off the bat. Amazing catch, Emilio. Thanks, All man. of us are very happy to see this snake because they're noted to be rather uncommon, actually. But this is the Chilean racer, and that is quite a special animal to find because they are endemic to this country. They are only found in Chile. They have a pretty big distribution across the country, and they're remarkable habitat generalists. So we're here in some gorgeous coastal desert, but you can find them in grasslands, forests, and as we saw when Emilio caught it, they're quite well adapted to living among people. But that is not a problem because look at the way the snake is behaving. Yeah, as soon as I saw it, I was ready to jump on it pretty much because I thought it was either going to bolt and then once I grabbed it, it would try to bite. None of those things were true. Surprisingly calm, placid animal all the way through. But if you compare that to the snakes called racers back in the United States, the North American black racers that we've worked with several times on the channel, this is a welcome departure from that attitude. But like most South American snakes, there's quite a bit that we don't understand about their lives. But what we do know is quite interesting. You are actually looking at the largest snake in the country, and in fact, the largest terrestrial reptile in all of Chile. And this, I wouldn't even say is a big one. No, they can actually get to about a meter and a half in length. And what's actually very interesting about them is that their tail makes up more than a quarter of their body length. That's actually why in Spanish, they're known as culebra de cola de arec, which is the long-tailed snake. And the funny thing is, there's only one other snake that we can find out here in this region of Chile. And in English, they're known as the Chilean slender snake. And in Spanish, la culebra de cola corta, or the short-tailed snake. There are only four snake species in all of Chile. So it's relatively easy to distinguish the ones out here just by looking at the size and the length of the tail. After a bit more research, we learned that Chile actually has eight snake species, not four. But the reptilian diversity here is still significantly lower than other South American countries thanks to its unique geography. See, Chile is surrounded on all sides by major natural barriers that are extremely difficult for reptiles, and most other animals for that matter, to cross. The brutally arid Atacama Desert blocks dispersal from the north, the Andes Mountains form a literal wall to the east, and the western and southern borders run right up to the Pacific Ocean, so there's essentially no easy way for reptiles to enter the country. And even the ones that did make it here didn't exactly arrive in paradise. As if the intensely hot and dry climate wasn't hard enough for these cold-blooded animals to deal with, fierce competition for Chile's limited resources meant that only the best survivors were able to cling on. 
But the racer's strategy of being the biggest and strongest species isn't the only right answer. One of the country's smallest reptiles is just as successful, and we're gonna show you how in a pretty special way, because you're about to see the first public video footage of this species on the internet. Harry, I have a lizard. Really? Yep. What kind? He just got under this rock, it's a gecko. Gecko? Yep. Mark's hey. gecko? Yep, it is a marked gecko. There he is. There we go. This is something we were really hoping to see. This is a Chilean marked gecko, and he is absolutely adorable. Look at this little guy. Now, this is interesting to see during the day because this is actually a nocturnal species. They're active at night. During the day, they're going to be tucked under rocks just like this to stay out of the desert sun. These are ectothermic animals. They're cold-blooded, which means they can't regulate their own body temperature, so they're essentially at the mercy of the elements when it comes to warming up and cooling down. And that is why a little lizard like this that's quite heat sensitive is spending most of the daytime hours undercover. Now they have a very interesting adaptation. Like many lizards around the world, they're able to change the color of their skin to best suit the environment they're sitting in. They can change from a very light to quite a dark gray, and it helps them blend in quite well with the rocks and sandy substrate that they're living in. Now they really need to be able to hide because they have quite a few predators out here. Plenty of birds and other reptiles would love to take down a little snack-sized lizard like this, so that camouflage really comes in handy. Now, we don't want to keep this guy out for too long. They can overheat pretty easily, so we're going to get him back under his cover before the sun comes up too high, and he can just wait out the rest of the heat of the day down here right where he was, and we'll let him get off. Chilean marked geckos are impressive survivors for such delicate lizards, but considering the unforgiving conditions of the coastal desert scrub ecosystem, it's actually amazing that reptiles can survive here at all. This region experiences huge temperature swings, with some areas dropping over 30 degrees Celsius overnight. And on the coast, the effects are made worse by the climatic differences between the ocean and land. Fresh water is also a rare commodity here. Some parts of northern Chile basically never get rain. And even in the south, where the climate is milder, reliable water sources are few and far between. The lack of water means that fewer plants can grow, meaning the ecosystem can't support as many herbivores, which in turn leads to less prey being available for predators. So even top consumers like the Chilean racer struggle with the low density of food options. And on top of all of that, the coastal desert scrub habitat is just hard to navigate. It's littered with spiky plants, massive boulders, and steep cliffs that are challenging for even humans to traverse, much less tiny lizards looking for shelter or snakes trying to catch food. But it's these extreme pressures that have pushed the Chilean racer to become Chile's largest, fastest, and most venomous reptile, allowing them to establish a large range across the country despite the variable conditions from region to region. It's incredible that this snake is being so calm right out of the wild. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that this snake is so large that it would represent the dominant reptilian predator in this ecosystem. Exactly, really the only predators that this snake would be facing out here are things like large birds of prey. But as far as other reptiles or mammals, there's nothing that could really take down a snake of this size. So he doesn't have too much to worry about, but it's actually very lucky for us that he's being so calm because there is some Something that we would need to worry about if he were to get agitated. Absolutely. This is a venomous species of snake, and though the venom isn't necessarily deadly to a person, it would be incredibly unpleasant. It's a myotoxin, so it attacks your muscles and tissue. And the way it works is it actually breaks down some of the structural elements in your muscles. You get pain and a lot of swelling at the bite site. There are no systemic effects from the venom that we're aware of, but it would not be a good time if you were to get defensive on us. One of the reasons you really don't want to take a bite from this snake is because we actually don't know that much about them. And speaking of being defensive, just to illustrate how much information we're missing here, while we were filming some close-ups, we caught a behavior on camera that, to our knowledge, has never been documented in Chilean racers before. The snake was trying to get past me, and when I moved in front of it to get a better shot, it launched into a wild defensive display, flattening its neck sort of like a cobra and hissing at me with a wide-open mouth. We see this behavior in some of the deadliest snakes on Earth, like the Australian black snakes. And there's another racer species from Brazil that's been observed using it too. 
As far as we know though, this is the first time the Chilean racer has been confirmed to do it. But if you're a snake expert or a local Chilean who has seen this before, tell us about it. This is exactly why we share the stories of these overlooked animals with you, because as a community, we have the chance to figure out so many new things about them. And if you want to be a part of that, you should subscribe to the channel and join us. Now, South American snakes are understudied as it is, but obscure species like the Chilean racer that aren't considered deadly to humans get almost no research attention at all. A few recent studies have shed some light on what kinds of toxins the venom contains and how it would affect the human body. And one thing that we have learned is that the venom is highly proteolytic and hemorrhagic. That means the venom attacks proteins and destroys blood cells. And the local effects it produces are surprisingly similar to the bites of much more dangerous snakes, like the lancehead vipers from elsewhere in South America. Though the reaction from a racer bite is a lot milder. However, we're still missing a lot of details, and it's believed that both the number and the severity of racer bites could be way underestimated due to a lack of reporting. The good thing is, they don't really use that venom for defense all that often, because as is true with so many of the desert animals here, they rely on it completely to capture their food, which would primarily be things like small mammals such as rodents, they'll take other reptiles, primarily lizards, but if they do find one of those slender snakes, they would certainly try and eat it as well, and even birds, which all of those animals pretty much can move quite a bit faster than this snake can, even though they'll put on a decent burst of speed when they need to. Absolutely. They basically will only get one chance to capture their prey before it escapes into the desert. Anytime an animal in an environment this rugged has the chance to eat, they need to take it. So the venom this snake has is perfectly adapted to stop their prey in its tracks. That is a clear indication of how critical a resource that is for survival here in the desert. Now when this snake is ready to use that venom, they do have to get a pretty decent grip on their prey because this snake is opistoglyphous. They are rear fanged. So the actual mechanism they use to deliver their venom is all the way in the back of their mouth. It's not front fanged like the rattlesnakes we work with back home. They really do have to get their mouth all the way around their prey to inject that venom. So they really need to be sure that once they get that chance, they can capitalize on it. Their mouth is full of razor sharp teeth. And when they grapple onto a prey item, they actually have to hold on and chew and work that venom into the animal's body as it quickly begins to destroy their muscles. So something like a small lizard would have no chance against an animal like this. Now, one thing I noticed right away about this snake is how big his eyes are with those huge round pupils. And that is indicative of a diurnal, a daytime active snake. And in fact, that's exactly what they are. These are active predators. So they'll be moving, especially in the morning and late afternoon hours, seeking out all those lizards and rodents that they like to eat. And they're not ambush predators. They're moving through the environment, chasing down their prey with quick bursts of speed. So again, we're quite lucky to actually have gotten this snake in hand. Racer is no misnomer. I don't know that they're quite as fast as the racers we get in North America. I'm not sure if that's been studied actually, but there is no doubt about it. This snake could outrun us through this habitat, no problem at all. So Emilio, thank you for making that catch. Yep, well because done. This is a snake we really wanted to see. We had no idea, really, that a big snake video was even possible on this trip. Now, we're definitely gonna take the chance to get some good shots of this guy. It's a very rare opportunity for us to see an endemic snake here in Chile, so we wanna make the most of this incredible encounter. All right, so we always like to release animals right back where we found them, which here is pretty unusual because it's right by the house. So they do utilize human spaces pretty regularly, so I don't think it'll be too much of a problem for him if we let him go right in the garden here. Yep. Such an incredible place to find our top snake target of the whole trip. Hi, right, bud. Thanks for hanging out with us. There he goes. There he goes. Go catch some lizards, huh? Super cool. You may think that free handling the country's largest and most venomous snake would be as intense as our adventures could get. But trust me, this was just the warm-up. The insanely challenging environment of Chile has pushed more than just its reptiles to the extreme. And lurking somewhere in this barren desert is a spider whose venom puts the Chilean racer completely to shame. That's a story for another day, so stay tuned because we have more episodes from our Chile trip coming very soon. But the Chilean desert isn't the only ecosystem in South America with unique reptilian diversity. In the tropical dry forests of Ecuador, 
the wildlife faces an entirely different set of challenges, which has led to one of the most fascinating assemblages of reptiles on the continent. To see the incredible stories that play out there, check out this video, where we venture deep into one of Ecuador's best preserved dry forests. And with that, we hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one.